Yo, what is up guys, Dream here, and in today's video we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Ritual. We have 100 maps ready to go with Ritual, both sextants and 400 Ritual vessels that we're going to have to fill to see if it is profitable. We've done a ton of tests and also we're going to be testing a few more things. Namely, we're going to be testing just how profitable the Arc Nemesis lead mechanic is over 100 maps if you started with no parts at all. Big ritual science, big arc nemesis test. But first, thank you to this video's sponsor, Peewee Overlay, an in-game interface designed to make trading faster. Hallelujah. My favorite feature you're seeing in the background here I've been using since the Heist League is the in-game currency exchange. You can use it to access all the functionality of the Path of Exile trade website in-game on one screen. Peewee Overlay streamlines the currency exchange interface and allows you to send trade messages with one click of your mouse. Download Peewee Overlay for free using my link below to enhance your trading experience. All right, guys, welcome back, and let's dive straight into the setup. So our map of choice here, Cemetery, Elk, Chiseled, and Val, as always, but why Cemetery for Ritual? Well, overall, Ritual favors open layout maps. You want as many packs of monsters to have the highest chance to spawn in around the Ritual altars as possible. I did extensive testing, which we'll cover in the mapping section, but I found Ritual to give me the highest average favor per map out of all the maps I tested. So Open layouts are king, and there'll be further supporting evidence with this in the later parts of this video. But in addition to that, Cemetery also has some very powerful lead mechanics that are very strong there, namely Legion. Obviously, Legion was massive money in our last video, and I wanted to bring it back, so we'll be featuring that once again. But in addition to that, Cemetery also drops the Brothers Stash Divination card, and we all know how powerful that Divination card is. I want more data and more drop rates on how common that card is, so we're running a reasonable high amount more of them to see if we can get some more brother stashes and see how rare they are so that's the map choice out of the way we'll touch on that more later but it's fair to say it's an absolute powerhouse for ritual specifically Let's move on to the rest of the setup. First of all, I want to address what we're asking here. So the first up is, is Ritual worth it? That's the main question we want to ask, and I have a feeling the answer is yes, but overall, we cannot know until we test it ourselves. Next up, is Arc Nemesis worth it? So I have taken the pain of deleting my entire Arc Nemesis inventory just so that we can count every individual Arc Nemesis part that drops in the cemetery maps, which are a part of the Treant Mirror Image combo, which gives you scarabs and currency. In future videos, I plan on comparing this to other recipes and seeing which one you get to do more over 100 maps and which one gives you more over 100 maps. So we're gonna be testing that out and we are gonna find the answer over 100 maps. And finally is going to be the spicy tech of this video, is Gilded Scarab Farming with the Sextant worth it? And we'll get into exactly what that is in a second here. But overall, that is the stuff we wanna find out. Let's dive into the Atlas Passive Tree now. Okay, so for the most part, it is business as usual. Everything is fairly similar to my last trees and trees I've had in the past, with a few exceptions here. So we have dropped Shaping the Mountains and Shaping the Skies. Map sustain is at an all-time high, and overall, map sales are at an all-time low. We're still using stuff like cartography scarabs, so we no longer need these nodes to sustain, and we will still over-sustain for our future projects without much trouble, and even have a few left to sell. Now, we're also featuring Legion coming back, same node as last time it's just too good to ignore on cemetery and of course we've got some new arrivals but for the most part the rest of the tree is similar we've just taken off bestiary as well as the map nodes and brought in some new meat that meat being ritual so we have some new arrivals here let's go over the ritual nodes we've taken and why we've taken them so we've trekked all the way down here to the weakest ritual nodes to pick up three small nodes of increased tribute tribute is the name of the game for ritual you need to maximize this wherever possible make sure your strategy gives you as much as possible so i'm grabbing these nodes here i think it is mandatory to make sure that you're getting enough tribute for using a non-blood filled vessel strategy which we're using here in addition to that we've also grabbed sacrificial dew here which gives us even more tribute from the small nodes which is very very good and also it's going to feed some blood filled vessel drops to us which are going to be big currency in the long run overall this should give us an extra 10 blood filled vessels at the end of our experiment on average and that's equivalent to about 160 c 
see. Not too bad for some points on the Atlas tree. And lastly, up here, two more sets of clusters we have. Profitable Prayers, which gives us two additional Ritual Rerolls, taking us from two, sorry, from one Ritual Reroll base to three, essentially giving us twice the amount of Ritual Windows available to us, which is completely insane. It's going to double our chance of getting stuff like Exalts or Favorable Uniques and good stuff. In addition to that, we're also reducing the cost of rerolling by 30%, which is a very big deal. Tribute is important. We need to maximize how much we're getting and saving. And lastly, all the way up here, a massive amount of travel points, but something you need to do is to come up and get a cult devotion giving you four ritual altars instead of the standard three a massive amount more tribute and it's also giving you some increased tribute on the small nodes absolutely mandatory Lastly, the new arrival here is Saiyans, which is going to help us run the Sextant, which allows Gilded Scarabs to drop from normal monsters every single map. That's going to be the Atlas tree. If you're interested in grabbing the exact tree, I'll post it down below, but that's going to be where it's at, guys. All right, let's talk a little bit about Scarabs and Sextants and round it off into the gameplay section. All right, so we're running budget Scarabs this time. Scarab prices are through the roof. Stuff like Gilded Scarabs for Legion are like 7C, but polished are 2C. Of course, we're going to be running the cheapest ones. To make maximum profit. So we're running Polished Legion. I don't think it's much worse than Gilded. Rusted Harbinger for 3C instead of Polish for 6. Of course, we'll take the one Harbinger less just for the biggest, cheapest, easiest discount ever. And we're also running Cartographer because I want to run some more experiments after this and I need some map sustain. And lastly, we've got Metamorph here, which is going to give us some solid income and consistent monies. Oh, okay. For Sextants, we've got the Gilded Scarab Sextant here. This is going to possess, uh, you know, make so three possessed monsters in my map drop a gilded scarab and five possessed monsters total are possessed due to the seance node 100 of the time so we're essentially going to get three gilded scarabs for free every single map over 100 maps that's 300 gilded scarabs which is a ton of potential money who knows how much we're going to make off that but it could be a pretty big money spinner next up we have both of the ritual sections here just standard ritual altars and then also an additional re-roll for free on our ritual altars as well taking us to a total of four ritual windows that we're going to see per map one of the base two additional ones from the passives and a third one for free uh, and then also another one. so it's actually five five ritual altar windows total so we're going to be getting a ton of opportunities and some really good stuff maybe we'll get some pretty crazy exalts or something like that and lastly we have hunted traders here the idea behind this one and other sections like it is that it adds additional monsters into your map which can spawn in the actual ritual altars giving you more favor and more opportunity need to buy more stuff we'll cover that in the mapping section in a little bit here Okay, that's going to be the breakdown, guys. Let's talk a little bit about our expenses here. So in general, there's nothing too much to see here outside of the big cost of the Ritual Compass because, you know, it's a good mechanic. People want to run it. It's 30C per compass. Uh, so if you divide that by four, you'll get how much it is per map. But overall, it more than pays for itself. And we'll get into why right now. But our mapping costs are pretty damn small. Our Scarab costs are reasonable. And we're running Fortune Favors the Brave to maximize pack size. And as a result, monsters in the Ritual Altar is to kind of get as much juice as possible. Lastly, our biggest expense, a mammoth 4,400C invested on 400 ritual vessels. A massive expense, but it's gonna more than pay itself back. Overall, you should not be doing ritual without using ritual vessels. Ritual vessels can be used on every ritual altar to fill it up and create a blood-filled vessel, which is essentially like a ritual scarab. Ritual vessels have no use unless they're blood-filled, so it takes someone namely us, to fill them up and then sell them to the people who want to use them as a scarab. Now, what's the flip rate on these things? Well, we're buying them for roughly 11C and we're selling them filled up for 16C for a lot of the time. So overall, every click you make in a map is going to net you 5C profit, turning it from an empty to a blood filled. And these sell in bulk on TFT, which is going to net us most of our expenses straight back just from filling up blood filled vessels. Meaning overall, our ritual is pretty much free. Everything we get in that window is free. Well, that's actually kind of a giveaway on is ritual worth it, but how worth it is it? We'll have to see. Overall, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to buy all the sextants and the ritual vessels, but I'm hoping it's going to pay off. I'll see you guys on the other side. See ya. 
All right, let's go through the mapping details. And first up here is how we ran our nemesis. So we started with a fresh inventory and we were picking up only the parts which were required for the mirror image treant combo alongside maldiction as well as juggernaut to supplement the lower tier recipes which you need to make the components. So when I was running the maps, as soon as I got enough materials to make either mirror image, rejuvenator, or the um, or the treant combo, I would create it. And in the case of mirror image, as well as rejuvenator, I would use the last two slots uh, with juggernaut or maldiction to get another two sets of rewards from those to increase my overall returns from the arc nemesis mechanic. Now, once I had a full set ready to go, a combo ready to go, I would of course wait until I had an eldritch altar, which would allow me to duplicate the scarabs. And overall, that is what I did. I generally tried to go for about two duplicates scarab altar rewards uh but i you know sometimes i went with one uh, and that's kind of just how i approach the arc nemesis side of things now overall you'll see how many parts we get at the end here but it is a pretty big surprise let's move on to ritual because this is by far the most important one to talk about because at the start of this experiment i was kind of the, under the impression that it didn't really matter how you ran ritual it's kind of like this is what you get that's it you know enjoy what you're getting but overall, it's very important to kind of keep an eye on which rituals you're doing first and which rituals are going to lead to the most favor overall. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when you're mapping is clear out the map most of the part uh, until you find the legion. And what you're looking for around this legion is a ritual altar next to the legion. And the reason for this is that legion 100% works with ritual. It 100% captures all of the monsters that spawn in there in the ritual circle once you defeat the legion so you always want to defeat the legion and then find the ritual circle with the legion monsters within it and then use that first as all the subsequent rituals are going to have those legion monsters in them as well Overall, if you don't get a legion in your map to kind of really help you decide which ritual to start off with, there are two other options which are going to increase your overall opportunities of getting favor in your map. So the second one here is, of course, just wherever you found a particularly juicy ritual altar. So if you have, uh, for example, a ton of monsters just spawn in a ritual altar which you find, and you remember that as a really, really good ritual altar, then make sure you start with that one. Keep in mind, though, that not all monsters count and will be captured by the ritual it's pretty much just legion monsters from what i can see at this point uh for example the um the eldritch monsters do not count uh strongbox monsters do not count if the monsters do not naturally spawn in a map uh for example then it probably isn't counting towards rituals some examples of things that do are sextant modifier monsters as well as rogue exiles um, those definitely worked. I couldn't get an Arc Nemesis monster to appear in a ritual and I couldn't get something like a Metamorph. So it's kind of just natural inhabitants as well as Legion monsters. So if you find a juicy ritual, you can start with that one and then chain it all around the map to get a ton of favor. Uh, and then the last one here is the map boss. So the amount of favor you actually get is based on not only the quantity of monsters, but the quality of monsters. So if you have high quality monsters in there, like a map boss, it's going to give you a ton more favor uh, than a normal monster would give you. So you could, in theory, also check out the map boss room and see if that ritual is spawned on there. And that can also lead to you getting a lot more favor from your rituals. And as a result, a a lot more opportunity to buy more stuff which is very important when you're doing ritual uh, so overall that is how you acquire the most amount of favor look for legions first and foremost then juicy ritual altars and finally the boss altar and run them in the order of most juicy to least juicy to make sure you pack as many ritual monsters in there as possible overall there is a few more things to note so i absolutely was using blood vessels on every single ritual altar i ran this is incredibly important if you want to make a big profit off of ritual and we'll get to that obviously in the profit section uh, but it is absolutely imperative that you make sure you've got tons of ritual vessels on hand it's worth it to go out and buy them and if you can get them in bulk even if you have to pay 11 12 even 13 c in bulk it's worth it because i sold my filled ritual vessels at 17 c in bulk so overall you're always going to be making a profit from filling ritual vessels as long as you make it sure your ritual vessels you're buying are obviously less than the price of filled ritual vessels so overall very very worth it 
And then generally it's business as usual with cemetery maps. Uh, we didn't have any other sort of kind of strategy going on. We were just focusing on ritual and arc nemesis. And that is going to be the mapping section here, guys. I'll pass over to future me where we go over the profit because it is the most profit we've ever made. All right, guys, money time is here. Let's dive into the nitty gritty detail of how much we made and of course how to run and all the discoveries behind ritual and arc nemesis. But without further ado, let's dive into it. Okay, so we have got the usual. We chopped out three quad tabs of garbage to get rid of everything that won't sell fast. Gems, fragments, maps, contracts, everything, incubators, all that stuff taken out. Even some of the legion fragments, which aren't whole, all excluded. Bad divination cards, uniques, rares, all of it's out. So we've got literally just the cream of the crop. In addition to that, I've also taken the liberty of selling stuff at prices, which I believe is fair. And I made sure to lock those prices in so it made sense. Namely, the ritual vessels. Well, how much does a filled ritual vessel sell for? I found out and I sold all of my 400 filled ritual vessels so that I could actually give you guys a real number of how much they're worth and how the process of selling them is. And we've got the exalts here, straight up, how much we sold them for. Okay, let's dive into that profit and loss. Okay, here we are, guys. Revenue and expenses. So our expenses were sky high. The highest they've ever been in any experiment. 56.6 exalts of expenses, most of which came from these massive investment in ritual vessels, buying them at 11c each. Well, could we make up for that? Well, we absolutely did. This was our most profitable experiment ever, with 161 exalts in revenue. That is ridiculous. Giving us a profit of 104.6 exalts. And I've kind of, you know, done a little bit of a, a, a bit of extra work here, and I put a little chart down here, and just to give you guys a bit of an overview 46 percent of that revenue came from ritual now of course we invested more in ritual than everything else but still that is ridiculous and when we get to the nitty-gritty you guys will understand just how good ritual is uh obviously 49.2 percent of it came from general mapping and then a measly 4.8 percent of our revenue came from arc nemesis but it is free we didn't have to pay anything for that okay so overall we'll dive into the full breakdown in just a little bit here but we have to answer some questions first so the first up is is ritual worth it well let's dive in and analyze so our expenses for ritual was four thousand four hundred chaos of ritual vessels and the uh, the compasses for ritual itself as well as investment on the tree now overall that gives us a total expense of 5325 chaos over 100 maps that's a lot of investment and it took a lot of time to be able to buy 400 ritual vessels and all of the compasses so you have to take that into account and of course if everyone suddenly does ritual there's just not going to be enough ritual vessels to go around because the only place the ritual vessels come from is actually ritual itself as well as expedition that's the only places it comes from and you know overall that's just not a a whole lot of supply and if you're capturing four blood filled vessels per map well you're just not going to be able to do that if everyone's doing it so overall this may be a bit of an issue with the actual strategy but it is definitely something to consider uh, so overall big expenses but big big revenue 9,494 chaos in revenue that's 4,169 profit and overall it's a 78.3 percent roi that is very very high we almost doubled our money on a 5,000 chaos investment completely insane now where did all this money come from well of course the blood filled ritual vessels is a big big part of it overall we captured 400 blood filled ritual vessels we bought them at 11 c and i sold them in bulk hundreds at a time for 17 c each how did i pull that off well i definitely did not list them on the trade website. I, of course, used the Forbidden Trove Discord server. So you want to come over here and you want to join the Discord server and you want to come to Arc Nemesis Softcore Bulk Want You Sell. And you want to travel down here to Bulk Blood Filled Vessels. And you can see here my post uh, about two hours ago, but I actually sold them in under an hour. 
Want to sell soft core 400 blood filled vessels item level 83 and I made sure to let people know that my high average mob count was why that they cost 17 C instead of the usual 16 or 15. Now overall I put you know a little note there and people bought them effectively immediately. They flew off the shelves and I sold them very quickly. You could maybe even charge more for them if no one else has posted in a few hours because there is big big demand for these blood filled ritual vessels and the reason people are buying them is because you know okay they want to run the ritual mechanic themselves but it's namely because they are hunting for mirrors headhunters and mage bloods in the ritual window the more vessels you use the more tribute you get and overall the higher chance you get at these high rarity items now i haven't done too much blood fill wrestle uh, vessel experimenting and we're talking about no vessel gaming here we're selling to the vessel farmers so we won't touch too much on that but it's very easy to sell these things and you're going to make a ton of money from it okay so where did the rest of the money come from grimro well I got a strength implicit synthesized belt, which I sold for two exalts. It also had uh, another implicit on it, which made it worth a little bit more. Uh, so overall, that's why it sold for so high. And then in addition to that, I also had some um, guardian maps as well as serious maps, which I picked out of the window. I had a bunch of uh, contracts, which were, you know, pretty good as well as um, some blueprints. And also we got a ton of normal ritual vessels. Now, some of these were preserved from our initial 400 due to the fact we have that Atlas passive point which gives you a 10% chance to drop a blood-filled vessel. Now, this actually isn't quite how you would think. You, when you drop the blood-filled vessel using this Atlas passive point, it actually counts as you filling up a blood-filled vessel. So instead of, you know, giving you a free blood-filled vessel and then you can fill another one up, it kind of just gives you a free empty vessel effectively. So it's a free of 11C 10% of the time. So one in 10 maps, you're going to get a free 11 chaos. So it's 1.1C per map on average, which isn't too bad, but that's going to give us some extra vessels here, about 10 in fact. But the other vessels we got just from you do uh, interacting with the window and using it as you would normally using a you know ritual uh, pretty much every window is guaranteed to have some amount of ritual splinters in it uh, giving you a pretty steady income source of money uh, just from the ritual splinters in the windows and they're always a pretty damn good buy but we'll get into the nitty-gritty of that in a second here uh, the rest of the money came from you know fossils we got six raw exalts a bunch of exalted shards Chaos Orbs, some Divine Orbs, uh, you know, we got a few bases, some good uniques, and we also got a ton of Fractured Bases. Now, I've only included the Cluster Jewel here, which will absolutely sell, uh, as well as the Damage Over Time Multiplier Fractured Jewel, as well as the Crit Multi Jewel here. Everything else here, uh, these are the Fractures I did not include because I don't know how much they'll sell for. This is a Feathered Arrow Quiver with Fractured Tier 1. I don't know if this will sell. I don't know how much it'll sell for, but it is here. It's not included, but it is there. Uh, and then we also did get three bases. We didn't get any Blizzard Crowns, unfortunately. Those are worth 60 to 70 to 80 C, uh, but I didn't get any of those. So you could potentially even make more. We got some good Scarabs here. Uh, you know, a few Divination Cards here and there. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we got, also got 12 Ancient Orbs, as well as some Sextants, and you know, the Fossils, and a couple Prime Resonators. So overall, you can pick out the good stuff, uh, and you will be able to, you know, get some money from the ritual window and overall how much money is that well let's dive back into the spreadsheet so the breakdown here is we made 53.1x in revenue from the blood filled vessels uh we got 4.7x of just empty vessels from doing ritual uh we got 0.7x of guardian maps we got 1x of high stuff and 3.2x of ritual bases including fractured bases and other stuff like that uh and overall the general rewards just like you know the scarabs and the, uh, and the um the exalts and the ancient orbs that came to about 11.4 exalts uh totaling up uh, about about 74.2 exalts in revenue which isn't too bad that's kind of where it all came from and that's the breakdown of what you can expect to get in ritual let me quickly run you through how to navigate and use the ritual window though because there is a lot to learn here now when it's talking about is ritual worth it of course it's worth it if you can go and buy the ritual vessels you have them on hand you have the compasses and you're ready and you're set up well you are going to make money it's absolutely guaranteed unless you paid out the absolute eyes for the actual materials uh overall i got 498 rolls in total uh, i missed two rolls and that led to the amount that we have here on average using my method that i talked about in the mapping section i made 10,249 favor on average over all of my maps and when you want to 
to spend that favor, you have to be strategic. You cannot just willy-nilly buy everything. You do have to have a bit of method to your madness. Now, on average, I like to value 400 favor at around one chaos. So for example, if you're offered 10 chaos for 7,000 favor, that is not worth it. 10 chaos should only be worth about 4,000 favor. But if you're offered an exalt for 7,000 favor, exalt is worth 130, so it's absolutely worth it. Now, generally, you don't want to buy anything on the first one, two, or three windows. Keep in mind, you get five total windows. Uh, so you have to make sure you're strategic about when you purchase and when you don't. Because if you spend all your favor, like five or 6,000 favor of your 10K on the first window, well, you're not gonna have any favor left to defer an exalt or a mirror on the fourth or fifth window, are you? So you need to make sure on the first two to three windows, you're only deferring, you're not buying anything. And you always wanna make sure you check out all fractured and synthesized items as they could be very, very worth it. And a quick tip here, you can go ahead and use Awaken PUE Trade and check hidden here and check the fractured modifier to see if there's anything similar on how much it might be worth. Uh, overall, that is the kind of approach. Now, overall, uh, 10 Ritual Splinters is worth about a Chaos. Uh, so you can kind of do quick math and kind of understand whether something is worth it or something isn't worth it. Uh, generally, I like to defer most of the Ritual Splinters because, you know, they are just super duper liquid. They can go straight back into your mapping strategy and you can just fill them up and make money off them yourself. Uh, so I generally defer all Ritual Splinters. Uh, if you have low amounts of favor, like, you know, on the 8,000 or 7,000 mark and you need to use a lot more favor to re-roll to seal the windows, make sure you're not deferring anything that you you don't already have or which is insanely worth it like an exalt or a divine uh, so overall here we have 10,000 favor uh, I'm gonna defer both of these splinters because I think they're worth it uh, these are very overpriced but I'm gonna defer them anyway just so that I make sure that I have something to buy later on in the window so I don't end up with two or three thousand favor left over because that's very very wasteful and you don't want that to have happen Okay, so we're gonna go for a reroll here. Okay, so we're gonna add Divine, which we deferred earlier. Uh, and we've also got a few other things here, but I'm not seeing it. This is extremely overpriced, so I'm not gonna defer that. This is okay price. The fracture here is bad. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and defer, 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 and move on. Uh, okay, so we've got a Prime Resonator here. We got an Expedition Scarab. So we're on our third window now. So we've got quite a few expensive things to defer here, though. We've also got some Exalted Shards. So we're gonna defer, 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 defer here. Uh, and we're probably not going to defer... Uh, how much is it to defer? this scare 121 we'll defer that i suppose and now we're going to go on a fourth window so we're definitely oh this is actually our last window perfect uh so we're going to probably go ahead and defer all of this stuff and then spend the remainder here on purchasing stuff that's kind of how i like to do it if you can defer everything and then you have a little bit more left to play with that is the way you want to do it so i've deferred 1261 i definitely want these sextants because they're insane value and then now i could also defer one or two more things here uh, if i wanted to by checking out the prices and then later on if there was nothing, for example, to buy in this window or worth deferring, I could just clean out all my deferrals and purchase them all and dump that 3k tribute in that way. But I really wanted those sextants because they're very high worth. And overall, that's the kind of approach. Defer on the first two to three, maybe even four windows. And at the end, you can continue to defer everything you were doing and then buy what's left, which is good in the window. But if there's nothing good, then generally you want to just buy out all your deferrals and then move on. Now, it gets pretty difficult when you have like two or three exalts worth of stuff on deferral, which is super expensive expensive and you do have to start problem solving and ditching your low value deferrals like you can for example stop deferring ritual uh, vessel splinters and just defer the exalts uh, and then dump those later and then pick up all the exalts and then you can go back to normal but overall it is going to take a little bit of strategy and overall getting higher amounts of tribute is going to help so if you can do for example two legions instead of one using the legion sextant that is going to give you way more and overall if you can you know you know get more vessel uh, more favor it's going to really help you out and give you a lot more flexibility here because I could have bought, you know, an extra 30 or 40 ritual splinters here if I had another 3,000 favor to play with. Now, overall, you're going to have good maps. You're going to have bad maps. Overall, some of my maps, I got like 7 or 6,659 favor here, for example. But in other maps, I got like 14,000. So you need to figure out how you're going to play your hand. Uh, and if you've got like 14,000 favor to spend, you make sure you try and buy more stuff so you have opportunities to spend all that because you don't want excess favor. But if you've got like no favor at all, make sure you're only deferring the maximum value stuff. Stop deferring the low value stuff. Just try and make sure you keep deferring the good stuff and see all of the windows. Make 
make sure you seal the windows because that's the highest chance to get something good. Overall, that is the tips for Ritual. Uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, you can kind of make a little splinter calculator here, which I've got here. So I can put in the splinters that I've got, like 45, and it'll tell me if it's worth it or not. That's how much favor it is. Uh, but you know, there is a few tricks and little tips that you can do, uh, but that's going to be Ritual and using it in the end. All right. So is Ritual worth it? Absolutely. It's completely insane. And it's a lot of fun to actually work with a window. And I can't wait to later on test Ritual vessels and see how powerful those are because they're worth a lot. Um, but you know, overall, is Ritual worth it? Yes. If you can get the materials, absolutely do it. And if you enjoy the mechanic, it is insane. Make sure you do it with Legion though, because it is very important. Moving on, Arc Nemesis. Is Arc Nemesis worth it? Well, I was doing the Mirror Image Treant combo, and in total, I only got to do nine of these combos overall, and I only made 7.7 .7 exalts overall my 100 maps. Now, keep in mind, we did start with an empty inventory, but, you know, in general, that is a fraction of what we ended up making in terms of our total money. Uh, so it is definitely not insane. We got one exalt in total. Most of our money is from Scarabs, but overall, it is a little bit underwhelming. So let's break it down a little bit more. So nine total recipes. Let's talk about the rare components that I got. So in total, I got 14 Sentinels, 18 Toxic, 21 Steel Infused, 13 Soul Conduit, 11 Echoist, and nine Vampiric. The thing that was uh, bottlenecking me was Vampiric. I only got nine in 100 maps in Cemetery. Now it's absolutely apparent that certain map layouts drop certain you know components more often. So it's possible Cemetery just isn't a very balanced map uh, for this specific recipe. Maybe a different recipe would be more favorable for Cemetery. Uh, making sure that you get an even amount of all of the parts is going to mean that it's a lot more lucrative because it's no good having, you know, like tons and tons of Treant Horde available if there's nothing to spend them on. So you see here, I've got tons of Treant Horde, you got some mirror images ready, but I don't have anything to spend them on. Overall, that is always going to be the issue with Arc Nemesis, and I only made 972 Chaos off it. Uh, overall, I think that maybe the Temporal Bubble recipe might be worth trying as well, but it is really going to come down to the layout you're running, because I know for a fact on City Square, I was overflowing with Vampiric, and I was missing Sentinel. But here on Cemetery, I have too many Sentinel, but I'm in Vampiric. So overall, that is the issue, uh, and that's going to be kind of where it's at with Arc Nemesis. So is it worth it? Well, it's free. I made, you know, 7.7 .7 exalts over 100 maps. Of course, it's a few clicks a map. Why not? do it uh, but you know I wouldn't be too worried if you're sick of it you absolutely could justify skipping it uh, and you wouldn't really be too worse for wear especially if you're spending a lot of time on the inventory management uh, but yeah that's where it's at and that's what we're doing all right let's take a look at the rest of the mapping side of things and also round things up so the last thing that we hear we were testing is gilded scarab farming using the sextant now this thing is absolutely worth it uh, so right now the gilded scarab compass is about 15 chaos I bought 25 of them uh, that's all maps and of course you have to take seance on the uh, passive tree here now if you do that you're going to get three gilded scarabs guaranteed per map now i got a total of 351 gilded scarabs in my map test uh, and i made about 10.56 exalts overall not using bulk pricing using my gilded scarab setup now if i can kind of do a little bit of math here i've already done it generally that gives me about 3.9 c per gilded scarab you get three of them per map so you're making about 11.6 chaos on average uh you know per map that you do from this gilded scarab sextant now of course the expense is a fraction of that uh, overall our 100 maps we spent 375c on the sextant and we made in revenue using that number 1155 c uh, so that's an roi of 208 percent that is completely ridiculous and it's clear that this scarab is undervalued uh, the sextant is undervalued overall you're gonna make an absolute killing and if you start to go into bull pricing well you're gonna make even more money off of this uh, sextant which is really really good so absolutely is good as scarab worth it farming uh, is it good as scarab farming worth it yes yes Yes, 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 it is absolutely worth it. All right, let's move on to the overall picture and kind of round it out here. We've made our general loot, you know, kind of income here with a massive spike to scarabs because we were using the, the sextant. Uh, but generally, it's business as usual from the normal stuff. Now, we've got our all-time highest revenue and we dropped zero brothers stashes. We dropped a normal amount of exalts. We got a seven raw exalts with a 14 shards, I believe, uh, which is, you know, a normal amount. Uh, mapping sales are at an all-time low. They're three C for cemeteries uh, and you know overall that's very very low compared to our previous tests so overall we've got massive massive reductions in our usual mapping supplies but because of ritual we've got an all-time high profit absolutely insane and overall very very good indeed in my opinion uh, so that's going to be the total there so 161 c revenue in, in in the total and 56 uh exalts uh in the expenses 104 exalts in profit most of the revenue coming from general 
and ritual. Is it all worth it? Absolutely it is. Now, if I was to optimize this any further, let me give you guys a few tips here. I absolutely would drop Hunter Traders, and I would try and get a second Legion in there. Because in the event that you get two Legions spawning and overlapping on one Ritual, that is going to give you those 14,000 favor scenarios, boosting up your Ritual potential massively. Uh, and overall, you're going to get tons more favor in that kind of a mapping scenario. And of course, Legion itself is always going to be very, very profitable. It just is a super profitable mechanic. We didn't even include the incubators, and it more than paid for itself just off the emblems alone with the lower prices so i would absolutely swap that out and swap that in and it will be a way way better overall i think that that's pretty much all i would change and that is going to be the strat guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown i will post this spreadsheet down below for you guys because you all love to look at it and you want to like steal it uh and then of course hopefully you guys uh check out poe overlay the sponsor of this video because they really helped me out all right until next time cheers